Our bat work in the Kootenai Lake area has consisted of four main focal activities. Building roosts, monitoring and evaluating roosts, monitoring bat populations in response to habitat loss and climate change, and outreach and education and assisting landowners. Our project has aimed to help all bat species, those that commonly use buildings or bat boxes, and those that rely on natural roosts like trees. In British Columbia, approximately three quarters of the 15 resident bat species use trees to roost and raise young. And while one may look out their windows in the Kootenays and see a sea of green, this does not mean you are looking at high quality bat habitat. Far from it, in fact, because a young forest is likely to provide few opportunities for females to raise young. Although some males may find some places to hide away from predators, female bats require very specific roost conditions to raise their young. Most require warm, low elevation roosts near open water. And many also need larger spaces, enough for females with young to roost together as a maternity colony. As our mature and old growth forests around Duncan and Kootenay Lakes disappear, or are transformed into young forests post-harvest, bats struggle to find natural roosts in which to raise young. To help offset this shortage of suitable roosts and to evaluate potential mitigation tools for this tree habitat loss, we have been constructing and monitoring artificial tree roost creations in the form of Brandon bark, a polymer bark wrapped around either a pole or a young tree effectively transforms it into a fake old growth tree or a fake snag with options for bats to roost under this bark in a range of cavity spaces and microclimate options. Young trees modified with chainsaws to have crevices for bats were created by arborists in 2022 and we monitored their use by bats in 2023. We used guano traps to do this. They're built around the base of the tree roost and collect guano. We have now submitted samples for the genetic analysis to determine species. And to date, we have evidence of six species of bats using our tree roost creations, including the Eumomyotis. During our monitoring of the new Cuscanut bat condo in 2023, we collected guano and genetic evidence of the Eumomyotis using this structure. A new bat condo was also built for both Yuma and Little Brown Myotis in the Crawford Bay area this year. We provided design and siting guidance for this structure and facilitated the creation of a Brandon Bark pole that will mitigate for the eventual loss of the current Crawford Bay Hall. In addition to our annual North American Bat Monitoring Program Bat Detector deployments, we expanded our acoustic monitoring in 2023 to describe seasonal migrations. This was in response to the endangered assessment by Kasiwik of the three migratory bat species. We now have our Duncan Island bat detector recording year round to capture fall and spring migration, describe summer species, and monitor for winter bat activity, which would be indicative of nearby hibernation habitat. In response to the deadly fungal disease of bats, white nose syndrome, we initiated and wrote with multiple partners a best management practices document for US and Canada. This BMP is now being applied in the Columbia Basin. And although white nose syndrome has not yet arrived in BC's Columbia River Basin, we remain vigilant and continue to prepare for its arrival. To do so, we continue to work closely with the Kootenai Community Bat Project to network with landowners and expand our capacity for surveillance and monitoring. We thank our partner, Kootenai Community Bat Program, led by LD Kunert, and all of the fantastic volunteers who helped make that program possible. We thank the RDCK Local Conservation Fund for supporting this work and the other major funders who enabled this Columbia Basin-wide project.